Now recall that we just saw that this resonance arrow is not worth drawing. It's not worth drawing this because it's going to give us three charges. How about this combination of arrows? Will we have any problem with this combination of arrows? Well, this one you might uh, possibly not be able to do uh, in your head, or maybe you can. Um, here at the initial tail, we're going to lose a charge, and here at the final head, we're going to gain a charge. So we're only going to have uh, one charge overall. So hopefully you can just see this by, look see by looking that we're only going to have one charge in the new resonance structure. Well, one charge, that's okay. One charge is likely to be significant. Uh, here at the tail, we know this is going to become neutral, and here at the head, we know we're going to gain a negative charge. So we're only going to end up with one charge total. For the sake of clarity, we can draw that out. Uh, at the initial tail, um, we are moving a lone pair. We don't need to erase the lone pair because it wasn't drawn, but because this is the initial tail, we need to make this less negative. Now we erase that tail. This head indicates we're forming a pi bond. Now we've learned how dangerous it is to form, how dangerous it is to form pi bonds. Very dangerous to form um, pi bonds. You can see the danger right here. We're definitely in danger of exceeding an octet. Uh, but it's okay to form a pi bond as long as it's with an atom that's also losing a pi bond. Well, you can see that we've thought ahead but we're, because we're also going to be losing this pi bond over here. This is at the tail, so we can lose that pi bond and erase that tail. So this was a legal new pi bond to form. I should have erased this head already. And now we're at the final head. Well, uh, this is going to form a new lone pair. And since it's the final head, we get this charge. So, as we'd already predicted, there's a negative one charge here, a negative one charge here. There's only one charge here and one charge here. So, we haven't broken our uh, no more than two charges rule. So, this seems uh, significant. So, again, it would not be uh, significant just to move this pi bond into a lone pair. That would end up giving us three charges. But it's okay to move the pi bond in order to make room for this new pi bond, because that ended up just maintaining the same number of one charge. Will this give us a significant resonance structure? I hope you gave that some thought. Uh, just by looking at it, we can see that at the initial tail, we're going to be becoming neutral, losing a charge. And at the final head, we're going to be gaining a charge. So the new structure is only going to have one charge. One charge is okay. Uh, so this is going to give us a significant uh, resonance structure. These arrows are withdrawing. I'm not going to bother to draw that new resonance structure. You can do that if you like. That's a fine exercise. But we should be able to see where the charges are going to be just by looking at the electron pushing arrows in this picture. So yes, uh, this, these arrows will give us a significant structure because we're only going to uh, end up with one charge on the new structure. this give us a significant structure? I hope you thought about that. And again, just by looking at it, I hope you can see that at this initial tail, we're going to end up with a new positive charge, and at this nitrogen, we're going to end up with a new uh, negative charge. So there's going to be now two new charges on the next resonance structure, a charge here and a charge here. Well, we already started with one charge. So if you add another uh, positive charge at this carbon and a negative charge at this nitrogen, we're going to have three separate charges overall. Uh, I hope I've made it clear that um, what I've been talking about is just counting all the separate charges on uh, the atom. Um, even if the net charge isn't that big, having a bunch of separated charges still gives you a very insignificant structure. So notice that what we're talking about here is not the net charge. I'm not saying that you can't have a net charge of three or more, although that really would be very bad. I'm saying that even if the net charge is still pretty low, um, it's not, your resonance structure is not significant if it ends up giving you uh, three or more separated charges. Okay, so even though the net charge still wouldn't be that bad, the net charge would still be negative one, we would end up with a separate formal charge on one, two, three atoms. That, that's generally too many. So this is not worth drawing. This is going to be a totally insignificant resonance structure given by this arrow. So this is really a bad arrow. It's not going to be helpful to us. How about uh, here? Now is this a, a useful arrow? 
Well, this is still going to give us a positive charge on this carbon and a negative charge on the nitrogen, but now that's only going to give us two charges overall. Two charges, that's okay. Um, because we didn't already start with a charge, we're not going to break that barrier of three charges. So this is okay. Um, so this will give us a fairly significant uh, resonance structure, one that's worth drawing. So this is a reasonable arrow that's worth drawing. All right, so the rule that we've learned here, again, is, again, it's just a rule of thumb. There can be some exceptions to this, but, but this holds over a, a very wide range. Um, generally speaking, anytime you're forming a resonance structure with three or more charges, that's so insignificant, it's not worth drawing. Generally speaking, don't bother drawing resonance structures with three or more charges. You only want to draw resonance structures with two or fewer charges. You only want to draw resonance structures with two or fewer charges. Generally, the fewer charges, the better, but it can be okay to have one or two charges. Three or more charges, almost never okay.